must apologize because I was planning to keep these motors that I recently got at the scrapyard together and we'd open them on video but then curiosity got the better of me and I opened them up and it was surprisingly easy to open them up and whenever they turn on well okay this one just works perfectly it's just a nice little one-third horsepower motor but this big one it spins up and then it sputters really bad and pops and crackles and sometimes just turns off so I'm thinking there might be an issue with the starting mechanism because the commutator just looks absolutely black and uh, when I got it home and I opened it up tons of mud came out which is now drying and it's very wet so you know I did find it in a puddle I probably should have not tried turning it on when it's wet but it might also just be a factor of drying off but either way I have it apart now and we can mess with this something like a 1950s has a sheet metal box and I've heard that means it's a, a later model like after World War II or something like that the bearings you need to add little caps to make sure the oil doesn't drip out that can rotate I guess that's for offset but either way it's caked in mud so that could just be one of the problems it could just be that it doesn't transfer over from starter winding to run because there's just so much mud caked in here and this can take a little while to dry off now unfortunately it does have some damage because once again the excavator tried eating it twice I tried getting it before it ate it the second time but oh well but I did get one of the pieces so we can hook that back on it doesn't seem like it really affected the alignment of it too too much it still spins nice and freely so that's good I put some sewing machine oil inside of the bushings so hopefully that'll help looks like that oh that might oh that might be a governor regulates speed or something oh look at the bottom now that's cool so that is so much junk falling out of this but it doesn't look too bad I know looks don't really matter that much but still okay so we need to get this off oh that comes off I've actually been cleaning up the workshop now as I've already said I, I was going to do and uh, I got I got through six boxes of junk and I threw away a bit more but now I've pretty much unlocked all these little metal tins which are great for parts that's how they started as junk drawers though unfortunately oh I sense something tricky here. Let me see. The half lock washer holding each side up. Well, that makes it easier to comprehend. That's long. So it goes spring and then this little tray hold these two half lock washers and then this little broken washer goes on top oh, very nice Ugh. Hey, I forgot how to light and saw it up here. <laughs> That's a little quick.
to get it going. Sometimes it has a hard time getting going. spring holds it back I see oh that's getting good but there's still a lot of disparities in this and that is odd Got a little piece of wood. Shouldn't damage it too much. Oh yeah. Now that it did that, a bunch is coming off, so grit. That feels weird. That feels really weird. Because <laughs> you can kind of feel all the little contactors, but yet not. But I think that looks much better. Much, much better. I think this, I'll leave it like it is. This, it's still wet, so we should definitely let this thing dry before I try to start it up again. piece of uh, wrapping over the windings and the winding wires are not looking too good so this might be a good a good way to learn how to rewind a, a motor was actually quite buried underneath some junk so it definitely was in the mud and not just like lightly splashed it was soaking in it let's definitely use some cleaning oh that is stuck Yeah, a little bit of mud in there. Mm, 
Now I'm not quite sure how this goes back together. It's a big spring mechanism. In order to go back down, it has to be pushed in. Well, oh well. You can see how doing this for a living could really eat up your fingers unless you had a proper tool. It might need some replacing because half of the washer just came off. Mm, that's unfortunate. On there. So that pin goes into that little groove right there. If this thing runs, it'll be a wonderful little motor to restore. Oh, it's crunchy. But you know what? I think this thing was suitably covered in oil to the point that most of this, it didn't seem locked up. So I'm actually quite hopeful. Now this was pretty bent whenever I first opened it up. I had to hammer it on that end just to get it to go back through. But I don't think I can really pull down it too much seeing as this is busted. Hell, I don't even know if that would not even go on. Eh, it kind of does. I recently bought a tap and die set should be coming in the mail sometime. So maybe I could just kind of redo the threads a little bit. I'm sure I have whatever size this is. shit coming out of this thing. Let's see if maybe some oil will help it just that last a little bit.
Oh, there we go. Yeah, so that is just the that is just that the oil got wiped off. That helps. Figure it came with it. Might as well put it back on. It's wiring. <laughs> Try to keep it away from itself so it's not gonna blow itself up. I got one little wire nut with it, which they're not very good at all, but oh well. I'm not a fan of wire nuts, but oh well. Let's see. Let's have some power. it's a good motor it was like 12 bucks because they gave well they gave me a discount still a few issues with the back but oh well we can we can deal with that so wait for this to be a restoration and here at the scrapyard had a bunch of old geezers there that were just kind of hanging out looking for tools or whatever and one of them was like really annoying talking about like oh you're never gonna get that motor to work, that motor to work. it's a piece of crap you should get a better one well it's a perfectly nice little motor what do they know it's a nice little one and it'll be a nice little job for phrasing oh it is the full piece pretty much well that's nice I'm happy with that I'm not happy with the wiring, but you know. So we should do a restoration of this. We should trace back these wires that go to the back to the coils in there, the windings. And we should replace these wires. If I can't fix that little box, we'll get another little box to put on there. And we have ourselves like a nice little one horsepower motor or something. Now I would really like to find out what kind of motor this is. I guess I could find out by how much power it pulls. Wow. Yeah. Is it starting and stop or what is it doing? It just has some very little cool yeah. dry, so it was kind of nice though. It works. Yeah, I had to I had to rebuild it a little bit, but yeah, it works. That's awesome. Is that what you're laughing about? Yep, that's what I was laughing like a maniac about. <laughs> I have a kind of scary wiring with little jumper cables going on here but maybe this will work uh, a little connector on here is bad changing. This is around three and a half amps. Although to be honest, com compared to like a quarter horsepower motor, I say that pointing to a one third, but you know, smaller motor, um, it's not easy to stop that. Yeah, I have to actually hook that to something to, to test it. Now I'm going to let this thing sit and dry out in the workshop while I clean up. Because it still is a bit moist. Now this one cleans up really well. And it runs really well. But I can just tell that it just 
It's only got a little bit of gunk on it. I think it was just dropped the other day. It doesn't look like it goes out in the weather too much. My workshop's not really in the state to be filming right now because I'm just moving everything around. And I wasn't expecting to film that video today, but you know, when you have something on the, the bench that's brand new, it's just easy just to play with it and you walk away and then you get to it again and you take a few more bolts off and then the next thing you know, you have it right on your workbench and you're already cleaning off the commutator. But, this will give me time to gather some skills, particularly brazing, because I have to get my torch working and then I have to do brazing. So I'm going to, going to braze a few things before I try to restore that. So I need to braze this and there's a crack there. A few more cracks. I'll need to learn to braze. I don't need to get my torch working. So that'll be a little while. And I'm thinking that this little piece that came on the end, it fits on there perfectly. That would lend itself very well to being a flat belt drive. Probably put a cylinder that big over it and weld it inside of it and then drill holes so I can tighten it up on the shaft. That'd be nice. And then we also want to look at the, the bearings to make sure that they're, those, or the bushings to make sure that those are good and the, they're getting plenty of oil. Fix the wiring. Um, add some shims because one of the shims broke off. That'd be good to fix that. Maybe try to identify yeah, maybe try to identify what type of motor this is. I believe it's a, what is it, what's it called, like a, a repulsion start motor. But it just really sucks that the label is gone. So maybe I should make my own label, like Renella on there or something. Or some other name. But if I could find out what motor this actually is. I mean like a Baldor or... I don't know, like Chicago Design or whatever company is probably missing now. This was stuffed way inside there when I first tried, turned it on. That might have that might have caused some of the sparking, honestly. It was in the back, but I don't think that goes to it. I think it's just another piece of uh, detritus from the scrapyard. That should be restorable. One thing I'm wondering about, should I clean off the parts and paint them or should I clean them off and just put W40 on them so they look really nice and preserved and with specks of the original paint? Or should I go with like a combination, like should it be just black, just white, just red, or like black and white, or white and red, or red and black, or something like that? Because it does leave options for like making the center red and the outsides black or the center white and the outsides red or whatever or just making it black or just cleaning it up and slathering some WD-40 on there. Now I am totally not in the mood for filming so I don't know if I've said this yet or not but this this Delco motor works so well it, it just it's not really worth showing really because you just plug it in and it just zzz, and is running. So that will most likely go directly into my belt sander that I'm building. Which... Oh. Yeah, I'm really tearing apart my workshop. I'm going to have 48 inch by 6 inch belts on it. Which actually I have. I got that from the scrapyard but it's a bit too wide. So I'm going to go with these rollers on this metal for the back plate. And another roller and some other metal to hold the rollers. I really like that I get I pick those up. And that. Whew. Well that's pretty much it for the what I believe would be like a one horsepower, or at least I'm hoping it's a one horsepower motor. Maybe it's only like half horsepower, but it, it seems bigger than most of the other motors I've had, so I'm hoping this is my my first nice size motor, and I'm glad it's a 110 volt. I'm glad it works. See ya!